Say hi, little kitty gives no fucks. No. no. I hate them. I just want to sleep. Why can't I sleep? And you just got back from New York Comic Con? I did. We had a great time. Um, did you get in to see Jessica Jones? I didn't get in to see Jessica Jones. Honestly, Damn it. I completely forgot about that panel until an hour into it. And they uh, showed the entire first episode. I know. And I missed it because I suck. I did go to the X-Files panel and see the entire first episode of the new X-Files season. And it's so awesome. Mythos? Yeah. Do we are we addressing the whole 2012 shit? We kind of are. We are kind of turning it all on its head. Um, Mulder and Scully are not together. Spoiler. I don't give a fuck. I don't it. give a fuck. So, Invasion. It, it didn't fuck them. Invasion. They are addressing all that shit. And it's pretty interesting. All right. Are, was, are they addressing addressing it, it or are they bullshit addressing it? I mean, it depends on your opinion. Like They're bullshit addressing it. I like what they're doing. I mm. think it's interesting what they're doing, or at least the direction they're going in. It could go wrong, but so far I am optimistic. It very much had that old X-Files feel. My only real criticism was that the wigs they're using on Gillian Anderson are kind of tragic. She was not able to dye her hair because she she has a hair blonde because she films the fall. And they basically told her, if you dye your hair red, going back to blonde, your hair is going to fall out. Like, your hair cannot take this. So they're using wigs to give her the red scully hair. Apparently, the wigs are going to get better as the season progresses. But the ones in this first episode are pretty bad. Um, that just... was my only complaint. It really felt like... I mean, the production values are much higher than old school X-Files. I just want to see my invasion, though. It looks a lot better than old school. Um, eight, eight years and David Duchovny fucking off for an entire year and all sorts of crazy and the super soldier bullshit. I better, by God, get that fucking invasion. The super soldier bullshit does not appear to be making to be rearing its ugly head thank goodness um they have rung the bell pretty hard like they mentioned like three times over the course of the episode that Mulder and Scully have a child together they kept using that phrase and uh so I'm expecting that kid to show up because right, they just kept on ringing that bell and they wouldn't do that like that's a that's Chekhov's baby you know like you got to show us that baby. That baby's got to go off at some point. Um, so, so Mike got me a birthday present. I saw present that. This week. For those, this is for the recorded bit so people could see. Um, Mike does my, uh, Mike's my producer on Radio Dead Air, also helps me out with the tech Q&A show. The technical Q&A show. The show where we do stuff about how technology works. So he sent me, I'm stressing that, he sent me, Something to wear on the show, where I happen to have a green screen back here. He sent me some Hulk-related merchandise. Yeah. How's that working? I mean, on the Skype call, it looks great. With the green screen. How is that? You know, if I put it up here, I just look really surprised. Well, you look like you have two sets of eyebrows. There. There you go. I still now look... You look angrily surprised. And also, it because of the, the green, the imperfect green, it's not being the right shade of green, I look slightly radioactive. So. I mean, aren't you? Probably. So... Other fun things about Comic-Con, I got to meet Seth Green, who is lovely, and introduces himself to you like he's a normal person. Like, I was on his team of handlers walking him upstairs, and he knew everyone else, so he just greeted them and everything, and then he noticed I was a person he didn't know. So he turns to me and he goes, hi, I'm Seth, and puts out his hand. Like at Comic-Con, someone doesn't know who Seth Green is, which I thought was really, you know, he, he was a really nice dude, really normal dude, you know. Um, spent a lot of time with John Rhys Davies, 
who is lovely and absolutely loves his job and loves fans and will run the fuck away from you on the con floor to go take selfies with people. Like, just t- deceptively pass for a man his age. Just take off. and we'll John, John Reese Davies. John Reese, oh, God damn it, he's gone again. Gone. Can, can we and put a leash on John Reese? And go, would you like a photo? Can we get a leash for John Reese Davies, please? I keep losing him. And what was great was walking him across the con floor to, he had to do an interview for Twitch Live. So they had a stage in the middle of the con floor. So we had to get him to the signing area up to the con floor. And he's just running off and talking to people and, you know, work in the crowd like he's running for president. And he loves this. He loves meeting people. He loves just going around being nice to people. But what was funny was the people that didn't realize who he was right away. I was at the back of of the group. Like I was behind him. And I heard a lot of people, he'd walk by and like shake their hands or he bumped into someone and said, oh, I'm so sorry and walk by. And then you'd hear the people go, Holy shit, do you know who that was? He walked through Weta Workshop, had a giant display this year. And one of the things they were doing was they would put elf ears on for you. For $60, a Weta makeup artist would give you elf ears. There's a girl up there having that done. And he stopped and just observed and waved at her. I looked back. She was literally doing this. And I thought like, <laughs> she was going to die. Because like while she was at Weta getting her elf ears, Gimli was just like, hey, <laughs> He'll sit there and recite poetry to you. Like, if you take a picture with him, he tickles you the whole time. Like, he was a lot of fun, and he was very, very sweet. Uh, He spent 10 minutes demanding that I have babies. I don't know why. He was adamant that Dan and I have babies. Um, But it was a lot of fun. I was 10 feet away from David Duchovny and did not have the nerve to say hello. I was several times... Less than five feet away from Nathan Fillion and Felicia Day. Did not have the nerve to say hello. Um, Why the fuck not? Because I'm a wuss. That's why. I watched Robin Lord Taylor, who plays Penguin on Gotham, teach a couple of little kids how to walk like the penguin, which is one of the cutest, weirdest things I've ever seen. Like him just like on a ramp going, no, 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 you got to turn your one foot in like this and do this. So it was a good time saw the new x-files which was great saw the next episode of uh agent's shield which looks like it's gonna be very good we have different definitions of great you you were like oh look at it i'm like do they actually answer fucking questions and i'm telling you that they do like they are addressing the mythology i'm skeptical they're addressing the fact that colonization day did not happen has come and gone i'm skeptical I should have no... Con- well, that's nice of you. I'm terrified of famous people. Um, like, terrified of famous people. And I don't... Going to do? I go from zero to bimbo in, like, 0.5 seconds, and I don't know what to say. And I'm like, hi. What do you think they're going to do? Like, bite out your throat or something? You never know. Oh, you, you, you gotta show- you gotta stay clear. You gotta stay clear of Nathan Fillion's teeth, because if he gets India, he just ain't letting go. Right? Do you know the show Impractical Jokers? No. It's like a hidden camera comedy show thing. This show is huge. I had no idea how huge this show was. We had to move those guys. It was like the fucking Beatles were there. We got mobbed. Like people literally shoving us out of the way to get to these dudes. And we're like, this is a comedy show on True TV. Like I had no idea. I've never fucking heard of it. This show was so big, but they were the toughest job I had all weekend getting them from place to place because people just mobbed them. It was crazy. Yeah. It was a very interesting. I am not a famous person, but you're a famous person. No, I'm not. I'm an internet sidekick. That's not the same. I can't just walk up to fucking Nathan Philly and be like, what's up? We're peers. No. Well, speaking of absolute craziness, we have quite a bit of it tonight. Shall we get to it? Let's do it. All right. Each week... Catherine, the radio that our audience go out and worldwide interwebs find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here. Well, segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And oh my God! This first story. Oh God, I forgot this is the first. Oh, oh my. Oh. Oh. Okay, Tara? Yes. Just hypothetically. 
If you were to find a dead body, randomly. Find a what? A dead body. Walking in the woods and you find a dead body. What, 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 what would you do? Um, run away and call the cops and hope it doesn't get up and follow me. Yeah. Well, this is, this, this is not, holy Christ, this is not what you should do if you were ever in a situation where you find a dead body. Homeless man reported a dead body by carrying the skull into a Florida Publix and using it as a puppet. Did he do the monologue from Hamlet? Because if so, points for him. Shoppers at a Publix in Sebastian, Florida called 911 Tuesday afternoon as spotting a homeless man carrying around an actual human skull. He was using it as a puppet, says witness Nick uh, Pica Picaro, I said. Quote, this is probably one of the best news quotes I've ever read. It smelled like death. According to Indian River County... It's not a smell you want in the supermarket. No. According to the Indian River County Sheriff's Office, the unidentified homeless man who was living in the woods across the street from the grocery store found the human remains in a secluded area away from the homeless camps and decided to carry the skull into the Publix to report the body. Okay. Did they think he wouldn't believe him? Like, can you can you produce a portion of the body, sir? We're not just going to go out there because you said there's a dead body. Like, because yeah, that's that's procedure. Do you have a finger or something? Otherwise, we can't. Of all the places to go to report, Hello, I am dead. Please identify me. That's not okay. Of all the places, that's disrespectful. That's 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 disgusting. And horrifying. That too. I mean, Publix is not where you go to report a crime. It's not where the cops work. I know they are a public service, but that doesn't mean they work at the Publix. That's not how that works. Also, if I ever just randomly stumble, not even a dead human, a dead bird, my first instinct is, oh God, I don't want to touch that. Yeah, you don't touch it. I'm not like, oh, I'm going to pull this up. Here's a skull. What do you do? Oh, God. No, you don't touch it. My sister had a dead deer in the woods behind her house, and it actually took almost a month to get it removed because the uh, local authorities could not agree on whose responsibility it was. Like, is it the state? Is it the town? Is I didn't want to touch department? it. Like, meanwhile, this thing's rotting in her backyard. Nobody wanted to touch the fucking thing. Yeah. Oh, and here's, okay, here's a picture. If you, if you or anyone else can identify this man, <laughs> please call the Indian River County Sheriff's Office. If you can identify this human skull, skull. sure. Why did they put that in, in the fucking story? Do, do they think people not know what skull means? Maybe they thought it was a scroll. I was just at Comic Con all weekend, dude. Okay. Tara, please tell me you're at least a little bit ashamed of yourself for having said that. No. <sighs> okay. Well, moving right along from Florida to Australia. <laughs> Crazy across the fucking globe. All right. Your hands across America. Yeah, I do. We do like crazy across America. And the world. Because, okay. So, most people who, after they steal a car, don't want to get caught. I can understand that. I, I can appreciate they, they don't want to go to jail. That's, that's kind of an antithetical to stealing a vehicle. But perhaps maybe... You should attempt to understand 
just the fundamentals of said vehicle. For example, cars don't drive in the ocean. I mean, have you tried it? Well, here, let, we got video. Let's oh. show you. Right here, everybody can see. How well is that working out for him? Chased by the ocean has driven a four-wheel drive into the ocean north of... He just straight up drove... Straight into up waves? drove into the ocean. Um, the man drove in the ocean near Two Rocks as a police four-wheel drive tried to intercept him. Officers watched from the beach as the man clambered from his vehicle and was swamped by the waves. The officers battled heavy waves to grab the man and pull him in from the surf. At one point, the man climbed on the bottom of his vehicle, but struggled to stay on as the waves washed him. The vehicle was quickly submerged. Yeah, those are heavy the, cars. The, the ocean is not where you go to escape. I mean, if you have a boat, it a may. car is not a boat. car is not a boat. You know what sucks is... I'm, pretty sure their insurance is not going to cover that damage the owner man insurance insurance ain't cover shit it'd be like here's we have property theft insurance but only in the specific set of of conditions and if you go outside of them we ain't paying shit it was stolen on a tuesday and not under a blood moon <sighs> and so it's not covered Nope, not covered. We only cover theft under a blood moon on alternate Wednesdays. Do you have blonde hair? Sorry, not covered. Not covered. Not covered. How the fuck? What was the plan? What the fuck was the plan? Uh, to become amphibious? Bad plan! Yeah. You know, you can't just drive to New Zealand. That shit doesn't work. That's just the fuck's sake. Oh, uh, well, it, it just keeps on. It keeps on. We have far more tonight. Um, Speaking of Comic-Cons, you just got back from New York uh, City Comic-Con, and some of these are not easy to get into. San Diego Comic-Con, the tickets sell out instantly. They have They release them in tranches. I love that I get to use the word tranches because it's it's actually the term they use. No, it's and even once you have the badge, like I got lucky because I was working. I got into the X-Files panel without having to stand in line literally overnight to get a bracelet for that panel. Um, even if you get into the con, the really big panels, the really big signings, you might not get into. You might not see the things everyone's there to see. So, of course, you may be tempted to use a little bit underhanded methods to obtain a badge, but you probably shouldn't commit a felony to do it. Man posed as agent to get VIP Comic-Con passes. And you're thinking, oh, is he posing as, like, a talent agent? No. No. Prosecutors say a Utah man posed as a federal agent in an attempt to get VIP tickets at a Comic-Con event in Salt Lake City. Jonathan M. Wall was indicted Wednesday on federal charges after the 29-year-old Leighton man allegedly claimed he needed passes to catch a fugitive at the event where attendees may wear elaborate costumes. Authorities say a security official got suspicious of Wall, who was posing as a special agent with the Air Force Office of Special Investigations. The OSI. The OSI which I have to tell you is the exact same acronym used for the secret agent organization in the Venture Brothers. Oh. The Air Force, con the, the official contact of the Air Force whose agents confirmed Wall didn't work for them. Wall faces charges of impersonating a federal officer and making a false statement. Yeah, there's easier, just say your press. That can work. Nobody's going to arrest you for claiming to be a member of the press. You're not going to go to military jail. They might hate you, but they ain't they going to arrest you. hate you, but they're, they're not, not going to throw you in jail. It's not a felony to pretend to be a blogger. Motherfucking. Of all the. <sighs> I mean, not that you should lie. Just pay, pay the entrance fee. I know it's expensive, but you know. 
Did, did I think this was going to work? That's too big a lie. Yeah. You, know, you got to keep the lie small. You got to keep within the realm of possibility. Right. Not that you got to catch a criminal, so you need VIP pass. You know what the real cops do? They show up. They show you a badge. They walk right the fuck in. They show you a picture of the person they're looking for. And they walk right the fuck in. Yeah. They don't oh, need... I mean, there are a lot of cops at this event, obviously. Every entrance. you And walk in the floor. Like, you have cops all over the place. A couple of cops... I overheard joking that they were walking the show floor and somebody asked if they were cosplaying. And they were like, no, we're NYPD. Yeah. Yeah. Don't. These guns are very real. Don't fuck with us. Yeah, but just... They, they don't need... If you are in law enforcement and you are on a valid attempt to catch a criminal... You ain't need no badge, no bracelet, no. You just have. You've right. got. You've got a badge. You've got a really nice stopping, badge. You're not stopping to go to the Adult Swim panel. No. I mean, he might be in there, hiding in an episode of whatever's on Adult Swim these days. I don't even know because Rick and Morty. 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 That thing. www.rickandmorty.com. Thousand years, Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty forever. I like Rick and Morty. One of the things I did warn Dan about, about the new season of The X-Files is, you know me, I tend to be kind of paranoid. I'm, I'm a bit of a conspiracy nut. Oh my God, it hits that button so hard. Like, I'm only going to get crazier. <sighs> oh, this Good. They have a character that Fox Mulder looks at and is like, you're crazy. Something's wrong with you. Fox fucking Mulder. They go into the FEMA death camps. Have you seen oh, those 30 no. minute YouTube videos? Oh, no. About how FEMA is building secret. Well, you know, the big oh, bad guy no. in the first X-Files movie was FEMA. FEMA. Oh, no. They're, they're starting this shit again. They bring up the fucking FEMA death camps. And I'm like, dude. Dude. That's. That's far afield even for the fucking X-Files. Like, they're getting into 9-11 was an inside oh. job. FEMA death camps. And I'm like, oh, holy no. shit, we have just doubled down on the crazy. So. Well, so a while back we had a, uh, I forget which airline it was, but it, I think it was Air France. It, it, Air France was came up with a new way to seat people on their planes to cram yeah, more people. the really, really friendly way. Yeah, and it seemed horrifying. And we're like, this is the worst way you could put people on a plane. We were wrong because Airbus has patented a new way. Are we just stacking people on top of each other? Yes. Oh my God, we are. <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> and I and I really thought I was joking. You were not. I have the worst superpower ever. The latest seating arrangement from hell, which stacks passengers on top of each other, comes from Airbus, which filed a patent published on October 1st with the United States Patent and Trademark Office. I can't figure out how this diagram works. Airbus is trying to cram more people into its planes in a split-level solution in which it arranges human beings like building blocks. Now, the first one's pretty bad. It's But every one of the... The second one, they have another figure down here, too, to explain it. That looks like something out of a Illuminati tablet thing. Yeah, it's It's... I don't, I, I'm trying to put it up here so you guys can like see. Like, all that needs is a goat head in between those two dudes at the top. You can see that a little bit better. If you notice in the diagram here, you can see they have people sitting directly above another human being, but overhead. So people's ass will be directly over your skull. 
It's like it's 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 like the pooping position. I, but then there are people laying down. I'm this diagram confuses me. In the patent, the company says we are not using airplanes high vaulted cabins efficiently. Quote, in modern means of transport. High vaulted? Particular... You can't even stand all the way up on an airplane. Are you kidding me? In modern means of transport, particularly in aircraft, is very important from an economic point of view to make optimum use of available space. It proposes creating, quote, a mezzanine seating area in the substantially unused upper lobe of aircraft fuselage. No, it's used. You know what it's used for? Luggage. Carry on luggage. Oh, they don't want you doing that anymore. That's... You These know, diagrams confuse me. And the, the, the second one, I'm telling you, there's some evil fucking Illuminati shit going on in here. It's... See? X-Files. It's like... You put a goat head in between those two motherfuckers at the top. <laughs> and you got some chicken sacrificing shit. And Cthulhu comes back and the plane crashes and... Yeah! You wind up on the fucking Lost Island. This is, this is really how people at corporations think. No consideration for actual people. Just how many of them can we stuff the fuck they, in there? They saw that Slave Tetris game and thought, you know. You know. They're onto something there. But when we think about people who may, in fact, actually not be insane and somewhat respectable people we may actually look up to, I think of scientists. I, 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 I pretty much consider scientists you know, the, the rational and the, their base, very grounded people. I was wrong because they have a report from Antarctica from the Antarctic uh, station down there that says um, I, I, I should I should not think. Drunken Antarctic scientists fighting and exposing themselves, report says. You're in Antarctica. What the fuck else is there to do? <laughs> you know what? As long as they're not turning into giant spider monsters, fine. <laughs> Whip it out and drink. <laughs> in Antarctica. Scientists at American bases in Antarctica should be subject to regular breathalyzer tests because they are prone to alcohol abuse. The audit. Wait, you're in Antarctica. <laughs> I would drink, too. The audit carried out by the National Science Foundation uh, warned of unpredictable behavior created by scientists consuming alcohol. According to the report, this has led to fights, indecent exposure, and employees arriving to work under the influence. Although the McMurdo base has three bars, um, the Anderson Scott South Pole Station has a small shop where alcohol can be bought. It is illegal to consume alcohol in work centers or during work hours. However, the audit reports that one HR manager estimated up to 75% of disciplinary action was related to alcohol abuse. It also found a researcher had been brewing beer in a science laboratory. Well, all right. Look, I'm just saying, you're in fucking Antarctica. Like, you're 50 feet away from the Fortress of Solitude on this side, and 100 yards away from Captain America on this side. And it's boring. And it's cold. And there's no Wi-Fi, probably. No. And there's nothing to do. But you don't get drunk and stupid in the Antarctic, and you know why. John Carpenter's the thing. That's what I'm saying. As long as they're not turning into horrifying spider monsters or heads on pneumatic tubes, fuck, do whatever you want, man. As long as you're not digging up horror alien shit from below the ice. Yeah, but they may be, though. Drink your faces off. I don't give a fuck. They, they found, like, these horrible... Remember the giant virus they found frozen in the ice? That giant prehistoric they virus? They to go all Jurassic Park on. And clone the shit and everything? Yeah. Because humans just can't not press the button. The big red button that says do not push, we just gotta push it. There's stuff down there that everything... There's tons of shit down there that's a big red button. You don't want them drunk near the big red buttons. Maybe they'll find a Megalodon. 
Okay, Captain America and the Fortress of Solitude at the North Pole. Fine, whatever. Your joke, your joke was factually incorrect. That wasn't canon. You have to, okay. You know Kids. what? It could have been the South Pole because neither of those dudes are real. Kids, when you have to explain to someone that their joke is factually incorrect, you're wrong. Never do that. Never do that. Do you ever want to see someone else? Uh, th just do you ever consensually want to be in a situation where you may have sexual contact with another human being ever? Then do not explain to people why their jokes are factually incorrect. Because you never will. Don't do it. It's it's just. No. Oh. Maybe they'll find a megalodon and get it drunk. Our last story tonight is from the human bags of trash department. Because there's no, there's no other. There, there's no other. Okay. Your, your nephew. When was his last birthday? Uh, which one? I have two. One's uh, in October. One's in June. The the one you were living with. June. Okay. And what did they do for that? Uh, he and a bunch of friends went to a like Nerf tag place. Sounds fun. Shot each other with Nerf guns. They had a good time. Yeah, it's, it's your know, kids hanging out. Having, you know what would would not improve that situation? White supremacists! Grand jury indicts 15 on gang terrorism charges for parading Confederate flags through Black Child's party. Oh my god! Grand jury in Douglas County, Georgia, handed down indictments to 15 members of a pro-Confederate flag group that crashed a Black Child's birthday party and harassed attendees. According to Atlanta's Fox 5 News, uh, District Attorney uh, Brian Fortney announced indictments Monday against members of a pro-Confederate organization called Respect the Flag. Fortner said the, man's, the, the men of Respect the Flag outfitted their vehicles with oversized Confederate flags and drove around the community. The group entered a predominantly black neighborhood and pulled up to a house where residents were celebrating a child's birthday. The men harassed and threatened the, the guests, saying they would, quote, Kill y'all, word I won't say. Fill in the blank. The blank starts with N and ends with human garbage. Fuck you. Why? A kid's birthday party? Like, bad enough, you gotta have your fucking clan rally. At all. But fine, the First Amendment protects you as it should. You are legally allowed to be an asshole as long as you're not hurting anybody. You storm a fucking little kid's birthday party and threaten to kill everybody that little kid loves? You're infectious human waste. Because, hey, heritage, not hate. <sighs> we have such a problem in this country. We have such a fucking problem in this country. 15 people. 15 grown or marginally grown human beings well they have Definitely to be grown yeah they have to be because they're they're indicted decided it would be a grand idea to put confederate flags all over everything and go threaten a child at his birthday party and everyone was okay with this they're all like, hey, that is the best idea I have heard since Dave said we should go burn down the bowling alley. And you just want to ask them, what's it like having an any penis? What's it like being such pathetic, subhuman trash that this is what you have to do to feel good about yourself? I mean, really? That this is this is the source of your self-esteem? You got problems. You got problems. Uh oh. And your problem is you're a piece of shit. 
how are you ever going to get a job again? After your, you, you have to, on most job applications, you have to, they ask you, have you ever been arrested? If so, why and what for? Oh, they could work at like Hobby Lobby or Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Oh, mother fucking fuck fucking mother fuck. I'm just, you know, every it's, it's fucking white people, man. I know. I'm like, can I get a like, don't you just feel like as a white person every now and then you should walk up to non-white people and just be like, look, I know. I I'm know. sorry. I'm sorry. We're horrible. We we are. The I'm worst, sorry. We are the worst fucking thing. I. Yeah. Th this just it's just, respect the flag. Yeah. Happy fucking Columbus Day. Oh God. So I guess. Yes. The first thing we learned tonight is. Oh hi. She woke up. She's like something happened. Well, what's going on? You want to say hi to the internet? <laughs> no. No, I do not. Say hi. Hi. Yes. Yes, Dan is over there snoring very loudly. We can all hear that. Can you? We can. I was wondering, is there like a bird in no, the neighborhood? That's, that's Dan asleep on the couch. I, I kind of want to be quiet and just because... I mean, she can't hear, so that's not what she's looking at. She's just groggy. She's like, why have you disturbed my slumber? Uh. Hi. Hi. I love you. Hi. <laughs> Every time you're like, I love you, she's like, no, 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 no. no. Your love is inadequate. So, yeah, I guess the, the first thing we learned tonight is white people. <laughs> Fucking white people. Just you know what? If, if if you see somebody, if you is not a white person and you see somebody who looks like us, we're so, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I don't know. I would, I don't know. I don't know why. We've learned that if you put anyone, even highly respected scientists, who's trained for years and years to get their degrees in the middle of the Antarctic. They gonna get drunk and naked. <laughs> the dicks, they will be coming out because it's the fucking Antarctic. What the fuck else is there to do? I don't know. Have you never heard of Xbox? I, I don't really play video games. PlayStation 4? Uncharted just came out. You'd like Uncharted. I don't even know what that is. Oh. Hell, fuck. Get an iPad. Play some Angry Birds. Put your dick away. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a scientist, for God's sake. And that's one to grow on, kids. Play some Angry Birds. Put your dick away. <laughs> Words of wisdom from your Uncle Nash. We've learned that the the air travel companies would prefer to put you directly under someone else's butt. They thought Slave Tetris was an instructional manual. We've learned that if you want to get into an event really, really badly... You gotta keep the lie small. Yeah, because if you commit a felony, you definitely ain't going. You're not getting in. They, 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 don't, they, they don't allow you, you know, like, a... a, a, a conditional release to go and get your collector set of season one of Arrow signed. They ain't gonna let that happen. No. They're not gonna let you anywhere near the cast of Arrow, no. in fact. We've learned that unless you have a boat, the ocean is not freedom. No. You can't. Oh, when they call it a sport utility vehicle, the sport they're referring to is not regatta. <laughs> And finally, we learned if you have, if you find a dead body, don't 
touch it. No. Jesus. Have you never seen Poltergeist? Yeah, that's how so many different kinds of horror movies start. Uh. And mass infection movies. And that's legit how Ebola was spreading in Africa from contact with the dead bodies, wasn't it? Yeah. And as a bonus, we learned that Dan sounds like the restless dead when he snores. <laughs>